In this demo, we'll show you how to implement nested playbook execution and user-driven decision points in an automated sequence. We will break this down into two steps. Initially, we'll see how an update initiates a workflow that requires user input. Afterwards, we'll learn how to modify it for use as a nested playbook. We are in Fortiso system. Creating a playbook with an appropriate name, we are using the on update trigger for indicators. But to avoid it triggering on every update, we are specifying conditions. The indicator's reputation must change to malicious, it must be an IP address, and the reputation must have been modified. This ensures the playbook only runs when an IP is newly classified as malicious. We'll save these conditions. Now, we are going to introduce a crucial point in our playbook, a manual input decision step. This is where human intervention is required, ensuring critical actions are reviewed before execution. First, we will give this a step name. Next, we want to make the title dynamic, so it reflects the specific threat. We will use a Jinja expression to pull the malicious IP address directly from the indicator record and embed it into the title. This way, whoever reviews the task immediately sees the IP needing attention. We will also add a clear description such as please review the malicious indicator, approve to block or reject to investigate further. For the actual decision, we will use a record field input prompt. This allows us to create a simple approve or reject button. This input field is fully customizable, so you can tailor it to your specific needs even adding more options if required. Following the user input, we need to define the response. We'll add a response step that maps the approve or reject action to the appropriate next steps in our workflow. Finally, if approved, we need to create a manual task. This task will be assigned to a specific user or team to actually block the malicious IP. We'll give it a clear title a detailed description outlining the required actions and set the priority to urgent and assign it to the appropriate security analyst. Now, let's turn to the previous manual input step and configure the response mapping. We will think the newly created manual task to the appropriate response within that step. Now, let's save the playbook and switch to debug mode. This will allow us to see detailed information in the execution logs. Let's test our playbook by creating a new indicator in the Indicators tab. You will observe the indicator being enriched by your existing playbook. As planned, the manual approval prompt appears, asking us to approve or reject the malicious indicator. I will close this prompt to show you the execution log. Notice that our newly created playbook is passed and awaiting input. If we open the Reviewers tab, you can see the pending input request. I'll close that now. I'm going to the pending task in the top right corner where all tasks requiring action are displayed. I will click approve to proceed. Looking at the execution log, you can now see it's waiting at the manual task stage. In this stage, a task was created, assigned to an analyst and given a an priority. I will mark the task as completed and then will verify in the execution log that all steps have finished. For this demonstration, we have included a manual task instead of the direct firewall automation. This shows how you can seamlessly integrate human decisions into your automated sequences. For production readiness, I have added a no operation step using utilities. For when a reviewer rejects the playbook, however, this demonstration focuses solely on the approval path and the nested reference playbook. Remember to return to the manual input step and in the response mapping assign the no operation step to the reject response. Now I will demonstrate how to achieve the same results by transforming this playbook into a reference playbook. I will remove the on update trigger and replace it with the reference call. So this playbook won't initiate any actions on its own. It only function when invoked by a parent playbook. This change means the playbook will no longer execute automatically. 
it would only run when explicitly called from another playbook now i am returning to the playbook section to use our previously created utilize variables and step results playbook we will link our new reference playbook to this one before that we already set up a jinja condition to filter for malicious indicators to prepare for our reference playbook we need to update the indicators reputation first i will add a step to modify the record i will select the indicator module then use the record id from the input results in the reputation field i will set it to malicious and save this ensures the indicator is correctly flagged now returning to the decision step i will add an update indicator action to the step execution this step will apply the reputation change finally i will save the updated decision step this step ensures our reference playbook works with a properly labeled malicious indicator in the next step we will integrate our reference playbook i will name the step select the playbook we have created for asking manual input and then choose the full environment for the parent data reference this full environment option ensures the reference playbook inherits the entire environment from the parent including all its dynamic variables allowing for seamless data sharing before testing we need to clear the environment we'll remove the existing indicator ip and the manual task generated by our previously manual input playbook then we'll ingest a alert from fortism we have now ingested an alert from fortism it's completed the enrichment process and will observe the updated indicator records clicking on the malicious ip record reveals the executor playbooks as you can see the playbook is stopped at the manual approval stage which is the reference playbook we have modified earlier and there is a notification in the top right corner alerting us that the indicator is awaiting approval at this point you can review the malicious ip and provide your manual input either approving or rejecting it to determine the next action i am going to click approve to continue the playbook's execution as designed this should result in the creation of manual task by moving this task to the completed stage you will see the playbook status change to successfully executed i hope this video explains how to call another nested playbook and how to ask for user input or approval thanks for watching